Welcome to the 2023 Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series, filmed on location at the IGFA and brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Mako Boats. You're about to learn from teams of some of the top saltwater fishing pros and how you really glean the most from the Saltwater Sports in the Seminar Series is listen for the little subtleties, the small things that we are doing to put together a great catch or to get a few fish when times are tough out there. So let's get right down to it and start off the Saltwater Sports in the National Seminar Series. Coming to you from the IGFA in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, it's the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series, brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Mako Boats. Get ready, everybody. Here's George Poveromo. Welcome to the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series, filmed on location at the IGFA, brought to you by Bass Pro Shops, Mako Boats, bottom fishing session. And our very distinguished, and I guess when I introduce my first guest, distinguished might be not the exact word I'm looking for, but we have Harry Vernon III <laughs> sitting there at the end. All right, we've got the living legend, Captain Bouncer Smith over here, and from Destin in the Florida Panhandle, Gabrielle Barnes, bottom fishing. It's very complex based on the type of species you want to go for and how you want to do it. So the big thing is, is determining the types of bottom. I field a lot of questions, new saltwater sportsmen in the emails, on how do you determine the best bottom for muttons and how do you determine the best bottom where the groupers may be so and i want to throw this to you bouncer because of your experiences fishing out of miami uh and also through the florida keys too but again muttons versus groupers and naturally they will they'll intermingle but if you had to get dialed up for muttons what kind of bottom versus that of groupers mutton snappers are mostly a free roaming fish they like a grass bottom, gargonian soft corals, a, a low profile structure. Conversely, most groupers like to have a house to hide in and therefore shipwrecks, coral ledges, stuff like that. So they're similar, but they're completely different. As an example, if you anchor on a wreck and you're targeting the groupers, you want to get your bait very close to undercut parts of a shipwreck. If you're targeting mutton snappers, a lot of times you'll fish behind the wreck on the soft corals and debris behind the wreck, a much, much easier bottom to fish. And given that scenario, when you said the backside of the wreck, meaning they're down current on the backside of a wreck. Now, don't the muttons also do large circles and just, you know, roam Almost around versus definitely. just sitting in there? So but, how would they act based on certain types? Say, if it's really a running harder current, do they remain more in a group on the backside versus when the current's a little bit lighter, they do more free roaming around it? What's your thoughts? You hit that nail right on the head. Okay. On a strong current, they'll stay in the eddy behind the ship. In a lighter current, they'll wander all around. And the groupers, under a hard tide, are they more the up current sitting in those wrecks? Or are they more tight on the backside? What could you tell us about grouper and how they react based on certain stages of a tide? Groupers almost all the time hang in the leading edge of the wreck with the current coming at them and in an undercut. So they're looking out of their house, looking for food coming to them. Being a, the first in line, basically. First in line, but being in the shelter of their house whenever possible. And therefore, when you're targeting groupers, you want to put your bait on the upstream side of the wreck close enough to get them to come out to eat it but not close enough that they've got you hung up before you Which, get tight. Which, that's the magical formula when you come up with that. That's, that's correct. correct. That's the magic now, let's formula. Let's complicate that even more, but you have a lot of these things figured out. Let's throw an amberjack to this mix. Would they tend to be more on top of the wreck itself versus where the groupers might lie in the muttons? They're going to be, as a general rule, they're going to be at the top level of the structure or above, and they're in the... More there are, the further out they're going to reach up into the current. Because they're so definitely... So when they're stacking, you're saying the more that they are, they're going to be more spread out into the current. Into the, into current. the current. on that. Because they're racing to beat their buddies to the food. Gotcha. All right. And in an effort to try to stump you, I'm going to hit you with one more, Bouncer. Uh, yellow Jack. That's a... Uh, everyone's caught those before. They don't know really what they're all about, but they're a terrific fish. And we did a show recently with Scott Wenzel where we absolutely cranked them making drifts across the wreck. And I'll give you time to think about that 
because we're going to a commercial break, but I'm going to talk about Yellow Jack and relationships with Rex. And don't smile because you're not off the hook, Gabrielle. I'm going to get to you here soon, too. <laughs> you're watching the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series. We're coming right back to bottom fishing. The Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series is brought to you by Simrad. Go with Simrad and go with confidence. Penn, let the battle begin. Roths, comprehensive oceanographic analysis for fishing. Mercury Outboards, go boldly. Angle, portable fridge freezers and high performance coolers. George will be right back. Welcome back to the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series from the IGFA in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Mako Boats. Let's get right back to George. Welcome back to the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series filmed on location at the IGFA sponsored by Bass Pro Shops and Mako Boats. I'm grilling the living legend, Balancer Smith. I threw Yellow Jack into the mix. What are you gonna tell me about Yellow Jack? Yellow Jacks will always be found within micro measurements of a live pinfish or a large live shrimp. Wherever that pinfish or that shrimp is, the Yellow Jack's mouth is gonna be open and coming right up on it, wherever that may be. Okay. All right, Smiley, it's your turn now. <laughs> okay. All right. The artificial reefs, you have a good network of artificial reefs in range of most boats out of Destin, Florida. So when you're fishing your artificial reefs, and give me an idea of, of, of what kind of water depth they're in. What are they, and what are the, the fish that they tend to uh, hold mostly? So I fish state waters, so depths are gonna range from 60 feet up to 80, 85. I don't, I don't typically get any deeper than that. Um, the artificial reefs we have, our counties put tons of them out, lots of steel structure, um, some uh, cement blocks, uh, pyramids, stuff like that. Um, the steel structure, you, you can get everything. There's gonna be red snapper on everything. Um, grouper's gonna be on, on your uh, concrete blocks, your, your steel structures as well. But the steel structures hold the amberjack. That's, that's the most prominent thing we like to go to steel structures for, which is what we fished yep. back then. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and is there a time of the year when the AJs tend to get a little bit more abundant? And also, since we're also dealing with bottom fishing groupers, uh, and I'm guessing, I could be wrong, is gag grouper your predominant grouper? And what months do they become more abundant? Grouper, um, gag grouper is the only thing I pretty much get in state waters. Get a little deeper, you get in some black mm -hmm. grouper and stuff like that. But um, we fish, you can get them year round. You can get amberjack and grouper year round. Um, amberjack fall bites really good. And I think it's more because the boat pressure goes down more than anything else. Um, and and wintertime for the grouper is good for me as well. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the amberjack. And when we were fishing, we were actually making drifts over. And I remember that being a rough day, so we were drifting. Do you prefer to drift or do you prefer to anchor on those wrecks? And, and if you do both, what would dictate what you're doing? I prefer to drift mainly because these wrecks I'm fishing are so shallow and they're such high relief that if you hook up to a nice size amberjack and you're anchored right on top of it, you've, you've got little to no chance of landing it unless you're just, you know, we saw. <laughs> yeah, I did see that with a short So, one. So I prefer to drift. That way you can get them off the wreck. When you're pulling them, you can pull them away from the wreck. Gotcha. And when we were doing this too, uh, you, you had the live bait. And I thought I was going to go ahead and outstage you with flutter jigs and all that because I saw the amberjack on the Simrad just stacked up. I said, come on, these are amberjack. You're going to eat anything except for my iron that day. And every time you dropped, you nail them. Then I finally went to the live bait route. And you would just hook and you would crush them. And like you said, just get far enough off that wreck for hopefully they don't get there. Then the scenario changes. Once the wreck is not a threat, then could you get them up before the sharks, right? Yeah, that's the trick. And once those sharks are keyed in on you, you might as well go. If they I know. get if they get two fish. They, they, they I'm need done. to open up some Arthur Features fish and chip stores up there and take care of somebody's sharks. Harry, Harry Vernon, come over. Let me talk to you about bottom fishing go too. Ahead. You heard Bouncer talk about our areas, and again, you're going for the muttons too. Our our grouper. Do you prefer to anchor or drift? And when would you do one versus the other? If I'm mutton fishing, I prefer anchoring up and chumming. And, and on grassy bottoms is, is where I've seen some of the good structure areas or ledges that I like where, where I fish from here to the Bahamas. Now we've been in the Bahamas and fished some beautiful grassy areas in the muttons. I mean, I've, I jumped in the water again, 
was one of your shows. And I, I literally saw hundreds and hundreds of mutton snappers just lined up, just waiting for And, and we're going to get a little more come up. dialed in just beyond giving a generalization, grassy areas. Cause that, yeah, that could be out in a cow pasture. We won't but tell I'm going to nail you down where your spot was. Oh, yes, we are. Oh, Let me get okay. back from this commercial break. Let me get the get numbers. <laughs> You're watching the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series. We're coming right back with bottom fishing. The Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series is brought to you by Rapala, your best shot at a world record. Suffix, always use the best line. VMC, your expert in hooks. Williamson Lures for the Pelagic Playground. Starbright, blending technology with performance since 1973. George will be right back. Welcome back to the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series from the IGFA in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Mako Boats. Let's get right back to George. Welcome back to the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series brought to you by Mako and Bass Pro Shops Bottom Fishing. I'm grilling Harry Vernon who likes to play you know, vague answers and he's talking about muttons on grass. But there's got to be some point of structure, something near those grasses. What's going to determine that? I mean, let's no, go, I Harry. Mean, our area, our waters out here, we have a good reef. With two reefs. Yes. you got the in, inside reef, the outside reef. I like you being on the inside reef. And, and give us the depth approximation You're looking of the inside at probably reef and the option. From 15 to 8 feet of water. And it's it gets really, really good. Uh, you'll, you'll catch a lot of the smaller fish inside and close, but you will randomly get some of the bigger fish also. But uh, again, chumming, working, you know, I like area where there's a lot of water flow. Not if you like say off of Key Biscayne, there's not a whole lot of water flow out front there, but you move a little bit south from Key Biscayne down towards uh, Carries Fort, whatever. There's a lot of lot of water flow in those areas. And again, as a general rule of thumb in in bottom fishes, I, I prefer to anchor when you're doing the shallow water stuff. Beat the patches are being on out to, you know, 80, 90, maybe 100 or so feet of water. Throw the anchor. You could get a chum bag working for you too. You might bring up the yellow tails depending on where you're at. But then you have shots that dropping down knocker rigs. That's where the sinker rides on the leader <laughs> on top of the eye of an inline circle hook. And you could drop down and catch really anything back there in the bottom from mangroves to muttons uh, to the occasional grouper. It's more of an action type deal. Now, Marquesi Island, just to throw these rock piles at you, always throwing it, uh, the hook on these Gulf rock piles, getting up current. And when the muttons get near, you look at them on the sonar, it's like a Christmas tree. And when you see that Christmas tree anchor and drop back and when they're chewing, they're chewing. Now I'll tell you something, something that works out really, really well. And a lot of people do not do this. Lop during lobster season, instead of just taking the tail and throwing the head over, save the carcass, crush them up, put them in with your chum. Mutton snappers love lobsters. They love- All right, let me ask you a question. I'm about to say, I'm just throwing a red flag on this one here because you're taking carcasses. You, you can get a little hot water, can you not? No, this is, I'm saying after, during regular season, Crush up the carcasses and put them, freeze them in your chum. Not during out of season. Bouncer, we're going to go to judges with this one. What? <laughs> <laughs> I told the guy about using lobster antennas. You save the antennas and you peach your leader through the antenna and tie on your hook. Very effective for mutton fishing. This guy saved the antennas during mini season and then went out between mini season and regular season and he got busted for having antennas on his boat out of season. Oh, I know. I'm well, saying, you got to catch the lobsters, and, and I can tell you what, and kudos to the Florida Keys, they are so strict on that, that if you got caught, what you just said, or what Harry just had, you get in more trouble over that than you would somebody stealing a truck. <laughs> well, if you have a good grinder, you're not going to know what, what, it, what you're not going right. to know what your ex-wife or, or the lobster. Hey, it's since gonna you're be already something. hot on the Jesse James <laughs> issue here, okay. well, let's talk about some of the in-store structure, Biscayne Bay has some decent bottom fishing with certain structures, or I don't know whether a hurricane bloom in the place. What could definitely you elaborate a, a little on this? I definitely know a lot of friends that had hurricanes hit that have structure out there, and it's absolutely off the chart, great gag fishing. How would you fish the shallow water stuff? I troll Rapalas. I, I troll around these wrecks, and I'll troll as close as I can with them because they will take you right back into that wreck, just like any other bottom fish or whatever and we just crushed the gag groupers and uh there are a lot of small ones of course you let those go you, you'll get your legal size on them but there's areas that you'll learn out there and uh that i know some good spots 
that just you can have a good day fishing it, for them. The fact of the matter is, is that and some people find them. Shallow water <laughs> trolling for bottom fish can be very effective. The last grouper I caught was caught on that lure right there, trolling 35 feet of water with this lure behind a planer. And at the same time, we had two planers out with Bally who didn't get a bite. Conversely, a couple of months ago, we were trolling in 12 feet of water with a planer and double hook ballyhoo, and we caught an 18 pound mutton snapper trolling behind a planer in 12 feet of water. So you can troll up some really nice fish. Absolutely. But, but the vast majority, I will tell you this, we were talking about mutton snappers. There's several different baits that work. Live ballyhoo, and hold almost it. whole live ballyhoo, and whole ballyhoo. Okay, before we fragment out the ballyhoo, we got to fragment to some commercials, and we'll come back and we'll finish well, up. We got to pay for the out the ballyhoo. We got to pay for the ballyhoo. Is right. We're going to take a commercial break. You're watching the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series. You're coming right back. The Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series is brought to you by. Atlas Tracks, satellite tracking of recreational pleasure boats, supply vessels, and fishing fleets. Columbia Sportswear, stay cool and protected while fishing. JL Audio, ahead of the curve. ACR, building survival products since 1956. Florida Keys and Key West, visit FLAKeys.com. George will be right back. Welcome back to the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series from the IGFA in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Mako Boats. Let's get right back to George. Welcome back to the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series. Filmed on location at the IGFA. Brought to you by Mako Boats and Bass Pro Shops. Coming back here, you're going to bounce her. And you're telling me all the different ways of, of ballyhoo to fish them. Ballyhoo are extremely good for mutton snappers. We take a ballyhoo. We break off its bill, we put a circle hook through its lips, a J hook back them about three quarters of the way back on the bottom. So you're putting a stinger on it? Putting a stinger on it. And we'll put it on a 30 or 40 foot leader. A what pound test? Uh, generally speaking, a 50 pound fluorocarbon. Okay. And we'll drop that down to the bottom with a pound of lead, real, real long leader, sometimes as much as 50, 60 feet. And we'll drift all the time that we're sail fishing or anything else and consistently produce mutton snappers. We'll take an anchor up near a patch reef in 12, 15, 20 feet of water, and we'll chum up ballyhoo, and we'll take live ballyhoo, and we'll throw them way out behind the boat on a flat line, and have mutton snappers jumping out of the water eating them. If that's a little bit slow, you take a knife, and you go down next to the backbone of the ballyhoo, and flay it for just an inch or two where a lot of scent comes up and the valley is struggling, really slay the mutton snappers. And then you take a plug of a valley who and put it on your knocker rig and put it on the bottom anywhere from 10 feet of water to 200 feet of water and you got a good shot at catching a mutton snapper. Hey. Pilchards, herring, cigar minnows, pinfish, those are all real good secondary mutton snapper bait. 100%. All right, Gabrielle, back into you now, too. Um, if you had to go out, somebody chartered you, I want to fish these wrecks. So, you know, we talked about the amberjack. Uh, trying to get, say, a grouper off of it. I want you to tell me to settle these. What are you using as far as a grouper rig, the type of bait? How would you get position in your artificial reefs to, to be effective at catching grouper off of them? So I, when I'm bottom fishing, I use the same rig. I use Carolina rig. Again, we're in shallower, 65 feet of water, uh, six ounce lead. We don't have too much current most of the time, so six ounces is usually good. I use a six foot leader. Um, what pound test? No, it depends. If I'm specifically grouper fishing, I'll go 60, but typically I'll run 40 and I can catch everything I need on that. Um, and like five odd circle hook. And um, for the groupers, my favorite, there's a few, there's a top three for me, but I would say I catch the most gag groupers and big red snappers on our wrecks off of a whole Boston mackerel. I fillet it down the side and then, like you said, down the, down the backbone and cut off the tail. That's my a favorite. Whole, a whole Boston a mackerel whole, just yep. basically butterfly. Yep. <clears throat> butterfly Very twice. Uh, Danielle, uh, Gabriella was mentioning the uh, tinker mackerel when I fished the bottom up in the Carolinas. Uh -huh. That's their number one bait as well, is a whole tink a tinker mackerel this big. 
is definitely a really, really good group. Oh, of very people. interesting. All right, Gabrielle, we're down to 30 seconds, and I'm going to let you finish this. Give me one or two or maybe three of your best bottom fishing tips that the average person can go out and actually be dangerous and catch something on the bottom. Don't set the hook. Okay. <laughs> Circle hook, meaning. Circle hook. Don't set the hook. Um, be patient. Put some, put some rigs down. Put some bait down. They'll draw the fish in. We don't use chumming much, but that's a kind of a type of way. Those would be my top two. All right, I'm gonna buy that. We're gonna wrap this one up. That's Harry Vernon III, Captain Bouncer Smith, Captain Gabrielle Barnes. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching the Saltwater Sports International Seminar Series, and we're gonna be coming right back to you with a totally different topic. There you have it. The Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series will be right back next week with a totally different episode. If you want a chance to win our Super Grand Prize Mako 17 Pro Skiff Center Console, powered by Mercury Outboard, enter the drawing at nationalseminarseries.com. One lucky winner will take home this beautiful Mako boat. Best of luck. <laughs>